I'm live again. I'm Ken Schaefer, and I'm here to talk about all things related to men's sexual health. And uh, I do this live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, I will be uh, wrapping the series up, and then I will start a new schedule of lives. I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but... Uh, I have been doing a series called The ABCs of Men's Sexual Health. Uh, tonight, we're up to you and the ABCs of Men's Sexual Health. Uh, so the discussion will be around those words that begin with you. Um, let me start by uh, just making a few announcements and uh, throwing some things out there. Uh, I'm really uh, trying to get people to sign up for my newsletter. Uh, I put out a lot of great information. Uh, it's information uh, on any, any articles I write. Uh, it's information on uh, when I'm going to be doing lives or uh, when I have a video series or, you know, if, if I'm going to be uh, doing any appearances, anything like that will be in the newsletter. There will be a lot of information in there about men's health and men's sexual health. Uh, not just, it's not just information about what I'm doing. Uh, I have a uh, project in the works. I'm starting an online community for men with ED, although it's not exclusively for men, uh, but uh, it's, it's primarily there to be a resource for men or women who uh, have men in their lives with erectile dysfunction. I'll be, I'll be making more announcements about that in the, uh, in the near future. I'm working on an ebook. Again, more announcements on that coming. Um, so let me get started. Oh, uh, if you want to say, if you want to sign up for my newsletter, it'd be, it'd be nice if I let you know where you can do that. So uh, you can do it in several ways. Now, if you're, I'm going to show some stuff on the screen. If you're on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter, you're going to see this. If you're on Instagram, you're going to need to go to the link in my profile and all the all the links I'm discussing will be uh, displayed in my link tree link. Um, but for those of you on the other platforms, uh, you can uh, sign up for my newsletter in two ways. You can uh, there we go. I'm running a promotion with my good friend, Lisa Atkins. Uh, she has a website called Inside My Bed Bedroom Closet. She also has a regular show on, on uh, 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 TikTok. That's what I'm trying to say. I keep confusing TikTok and Twitter. Uh, to me, they sound very similar, but she has a, a regular popular show on TikTok. Anyway, she also has a line of herbal products designed to help support men's sexual health. She also has a line of pro products for women. Um, and if, if you sign up for my newsletter, if you go to uh, herbalerotics.com and there's a QR code up in the corner, uh, up in the uh, left, upper left-hand corner and the, uh, uh, the, uh, URL is down in the lower left-hand corner. Um, you, you can sign up for my newsletter. You'll get all my great information, and you'll get a discount code for her products, which are excellent products. Uh, I'm a big proponent of, of uh, herbal supplements. Um, I think most people are not getting what they need from their diet, and supplementation can help you get all the nutrients you need to be healthy. And there are some nutrients you need 
to support your sexual health. So, all right. Another way you can, oh, uh, here's Lisa's website if you're interested. Her, that's a QR code to her website. I'm getting used to these. Um, and here's her, the URL to her website. Now, you can uh, also uh, go to healthysexualitynews.com. That's an that's an alternate way to sign up. And I didn't create the QR code for that, but I'll do that for next time. Anyway, healthysexualitynews.com. And you can sign up for my newsletter. Uh, if you're not interested in getting the, the uh, discount code for Lisa's products, if you sign up for my newsletter here, you will get information on how the, the first steps in supporting your sexual health by becoming healthy. And as I, I always say, that sexual health is general health with a specific goal. Uh, you can't, you have to get healthy uh, in general. You can't, be, you can't um, expect to keep your sexual health and your, 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 your ability to perform in the bedroom. You can't expect to keep that going if you're unhealthy. In fact, one of the first, when, when men have ED, it's almost always a sign of a health problem uh, that usually that they're unaware of and, but there's a health problem there. And, Sometimes you're going to be aware of it. Sometimes you're not, uh, but it's there. It's probably there. So you need to really focus on your general health and then, then focus on what will help your sexual health. They're, they're not separate things. Okay. Uh, so I will uh, continue. So the, the words of the day are urologist and ultrasound. All right. Now, most men, when they're going to be treated for ED, will go to a urologist and with good reason. Uh, urologists, that's the correct specialty for most men. Now, Depending on what's causing your ED, you may start with their neurologist, but you may need to bring in doctors with other specialties. Um, so how, uh, you know, for instance, an endocrinologist, if you're having problems with your hormones, although many urologists will treat men with low testosterone uh, and other other hormonal issues that that relate to sexual function all right uh i'm i'm a little out of sorts tonight I, i'm just not thinking clearly so i hope you'll stick with me um all right so you the urologist is probably the first place you're going to go now how do you but you don't necessarily have to go to a neurologist there are many other kinds of doctors that specialize in men's health. Uh, uh, but you probably want to start with your urologist. All right. Other, other kinds of doctors that I've had great experiences with are functional medicine doctors and naturopaths. Naturopaths are specialized in using natural remedies as much as possible to treat uh, whatever is wrong with whatever illness you have. Um, I went to a naturopath. He gave me the most extensive set of, of tests that any doctor ever has given me that he dived so deeply into how my body was working and uh, what problems there were in there and what needed support. I had some metabolic issues that I didn't know about. I had, uh, 
hormonal issues I didn't know about. And he uncovered them and started treating me with, uh, with supplements. Uh, and I made a lot of progress simply using the supplements. Um, functional medicine doctors are doctors that um, have a more holistic approach to medicine. Most doctors in mainstream medicine will focus on a specialty, for instance, urology or endocrinology. And, um, and a functional medicine doctor can be useful because they, they know how all these specialties kind of where they meet. And sometimes someone in one specialty will miss something because some, uh, something else that they're not acquainted with is going wrong, but it's cascading into a problem that they are seeing and treating. So they, so many times uh, when it comes to ED, doctors are not, not even treating the source of the problem. You go to a urologist and if your problem is related to metabolic issues, you know, he or she may be stumped as to what's causing your ED. So a functional medicine doctor will, since they look at everything more holistically, will see where these problems overlap and how problems in one area can manifest in another. All right. Uh, I have a great urologist. I'll give him a plug here. His name is Dr. Paul Gittens, and he works out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and New York City, New York. Um, uh, he's my urologist. He's excellent. Uh, so if you're looking for a urologist, I, I highly recommend him. Okay. So how do you pick a good urologist or a doctor for treating ED? And in my experience, and I, I don't think my experience is unique, most doctors and most urologists who are treating ED are doing a terrible job. They are, there are systemic issues with the way medicine is practiced in the United States. All right, so one of those issues is that, um, now this is definitely true of testosterone, and I'm sure it's true of many other standard tests that are out there. So when you get tested for testosterone, um, what they're testing is uh, what your levels are, you know, and, and this is true for other hormones. And if, the, if your levels come back in the normal range, most doctors incorrectly assume that that means you're healthy. If you're in the normal range, you're healthy, and it does not mean that because there are so many people who have unhealthy levels of testosterone and, and I'm sure other hormones, thyroid hormone is another one, um, there's so many people with unhealthy levels that unhealthy levels become normal. And so when they give you a test and say you're, you're normal, then technically they're correct. There, there are so many unhealthy people in the population that it's normal to see those crappy numbers. Um, so, <laughs> So normal does not mean healthy. And, you, and my point is, I'm going about this in a very roundabout way, find a doctor that understands that nuance. Whatever you're being tested for, make sure the doctor understands the difference between what normal levels are and what healthy levels are. And in the case of testosterone, uh, the, the normal range is for total testosterone is generally between 300 and 1,000. Uh, that varies uh, depending on who's doing the test and how the test is being performed and a lot of other things. But it's generally 300 to 1,000. 
uh, somewhere in there. Anyway, the healthy range for testosterone is 700 to 1200 and the normal range is 300 to 1000 all right so you can see that there's an issue there if they, there's a whole range from 300 to 700 where the doctors will tell you you're just fine when you're not and i've had similar experiences with thyroid levels i had normal thyroid levels normal meaning uh, normally found within the population but they were unhealthy they i was i was at an unhealthy level for my thyroid hormones um, i was able to correct that simply by taking supplements by the way um, so you need a doctor who un, who understands the nuance between normal test results and healthy test results. Okay, the second thing I recommend you look for is uh, oh, I'm just I'm just not quite with it tonight. Um, I had it right on my mind. Uh, <laughs> Oh, this is embarrassing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the second most important, or the one of the most important things to look for in a doctor is a doctor who is not going to just treat your symptoms. A doctor who is going to dig in and find out what the source of the problem is. That may mean pulling in other doctors. It may mean doing a lot of tests. It may be a frustrating experience because... Uh, the underlying issues may not be apparent or easily found. It may require tests that most doctors don't even order or know how to interpret. So um, but you need a doctor who's gonna who's gonna do everything he or she can do to find out what the source of the problem is. Many doctors, and this is particularly true of ED, because there are so many possible causes for ED, uh, and many of them have nothing uh, to do with what a urologist would normally look at. Uh, there are so many possible reasons why a man could get ED, and 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 they just don't want to do the work to find out what is causing it in each individual case. Instead, they treat the symptoms. They throw Viagra or Cialis or one of the other uh, drugs that are similar. And usually they'll work for a while. And again, I've said this time and time again, eventually they almost always stop working because the underlying issue is not being addressed and is probably getting worse over time. All right. Uh, so a doctor that understands the nuances of test results that remember, if you get nothing else from what I'm saying tonight, just remember normal does not mean healthy. All right. And a doctor who's going to dig in and find the source of uh, the underlying issue that's manifesting in your symptoms. Okay. All right, next. Uh, ultrasound. Now, ultrasound is a diagnostic tool that's used for many, many things. Almost everyone's heard of ultrasound. Um, it's used uh, anytime they want to get a picture of what's going inside your body without cutting you open, one of the main tools they have is, is ultrasound. And ultrasounds are used by doctors, usually urologists, and they can test 
the blood flow in the penis. And this is an important test. Many doctors don't even bother with it. Why? I don't know. But it, it's, it's important to know how, how, uh, my, what problems you're having with blood flow in your penis. Uh, I went to a urologist who didn't, you know, when I asked him to do the test, he, he refused. He felt that it wasn't worth the effort. Um, he also looked at my testosterone results, which were terrible, and said that I was perfectly healthy. Um, I never went back to him after, after one visit. I never went back to him. All right. And you should do that, too. You should be asking your doctors the tough questions to weed out the majority of doctors who are practicing lazy medicine and the, doc the doctors who, and I'm not saying that they don't mean well, but they're not, they're trained to practice a lazy form of medicine. And they're also being trained to cover their asses. They're afraid to do things to help their clients because they're afraid of being sued or falling out of favor with some uh, medical uh, organization. Um, so, and often they're part of a medical group, you know, that, that, um, you know, they, that they need to be a part of a medical group in order to, to function as a, most doctors need to be part of a medical group in order to function as a doctor. Uh, uh, they're also beholden to the insurance companies that uh, often uh, don't, will look, well, they will look for any excuse not to cover what you need in order to become healthy. Uh, that's true for testosterone uh, because the insurance companies don't understand the nuance that normal does not mean healthy. So if you have a normal level of testosterone, they're not going to pay for your testosterone. Fortunately, if you there are compounding pharmacies and you can get testosterone relatively cheap if you go to a compounding pharmacy if you go through cvs or one of the chain uh, uh chains of pharmacies cvs walmart whatever you're going to be paying several hundred dollars for a, a month's supply of testosterone and you can go to compounding pharmacies and get it for like 50 bucks so but the, my point is, is that the insurance companies will not pay and the doctors will therefore not prescribe. All right. Um, I've kind of rambled today. This has kind of just been off the top of my head. Um, so I appreciate you sticking with me. Um, I want to reiterate, please please sign up for my newsletter either at healthysexualitynews.com. And again, if you're on Instagram, go to my link tree link in my profile. Everyone else, you can see healthysexualitynews.com. Uh, you can also sign up for my newsletter at my website. I just posted the QR code and now I'll post the website. Uh, you can sign up for my newsletter there if you wish. And uh, I have a lot of great blog articles on my website. So I would encourage you to go there. And every time I release a blog article, I send out a newsletter saying, read my, read my blog article. Um, now, of if you're interested in herbal supplements, and I hope that you are. A lot of people uh, refuse to consider taking supplements. They don't think they do well or do anything. Uh, the reality is, is that supplements are only going to help you uh, 
when if, if if there's something your body's missing, if it's supplying something your body's missing. Um, so I just put up the QR code for herbalerotics.com. Uh, so if you're taking a supplement and you don't need it, of course, it's not going to do anything for you. Uh, so there there is an art to uh, finding the supplements you need. Uh, there are some things that uh, there is widespread problems with, like vitamin D, magnesium, to name two off the top of my head. Those are uh, those are two things that most people need to supplement. Not everybody, but most people. My point is um, supplements do work. They have worked for me. If it weren't for supplements, my thyroid levels would be too low or I would be on thyroid medication, which has a, a bunch of side effects. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's worked for me. I know it's, it, that the same supplement will not work for everybody. Uh, everybody's different. Everyone has different needs. Everyone has a different diet. Uh, everyone, uh, everyone's body has different metabolic issues uh, and different, uh, you know, gut issues that, that affect your ability to absorb uh, nutrients. So, you know, th there's an art to trying to find the, the right supplements. And I, I, I have a couple of blog articles on my website that I discuss this. Um, and I give you kind of a, a plan, a way to go about finding supplements that will help you. And mo most people just shotgun it. They, they take a bunch of things that they've heard are great and that have helped their friend or their sister or brother or whatever. Uh, and so they're just taking a bunch of stuff. Some of it might be helping and some of it might be doing nothing. You just, you, you know, so if you can afford it, go to a naturopath. Naturopaths uh, can give you the tests you need to find out which supplements are likely to <clears throat> likely to help you. Okay, so again, sign up for my newsletter here at herbalrocks.com. You can get the uh, discount code. You can also go to my website and you can uh, go to healthysexualitynews.com and you can sign up there. Uh, I have some things coming up. Um, also, I, I'm going to start doing lives on TikTok. It's not going to be this live. It's going to be separate lives. I'm kind of experimenting with the TikTok format. So if you're on TikTok, please follow me there. If you're just following me on, on one of the uh, on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, or YouTube, uh, that's that's great. I just hope that you will like, subscribe, like, and share. Uh, you know, uh, the more I can get the word out, and the more people I can touch, the more people I can help. So, um, and you know how social media works. You need likes in order for the social media platform to start promoting you. Uh, so once the series is over, uh, and I, I will think of some other lives to do, um, I'm not sure I'm gonna continue doing lives on Instagram. I'm debating that. Uh, unfortunately, Instagram, seems intent on making things difficult for creators. And there's just so many little annoying things with Instagram that that just add a lot of uh, a lot of problems to creating 
alive that are just completely unnecessary. And I've, I've, I've talked about this in previous lives. Instagram, I understand people love, I, I like Instagram. I like looking at other people's Instagram posts and their reels and stuff like that. But the reality is they make it difficult. They unnecessarily difficult. And um, so I, I, I'm not sure. I'm debating whether or not I'll be continuing on Instagram. But I will definitely be doing lives on uh, Facebook, uh, YouTube, and Twitter. And then I will probably be doing separate lives on um, TikTok because because of the platform differences. It's it's awkward to combine lives on uh, TikTok and other platforms. Uh, but I'll experiment with it. Maybe maybe I can do it all at once. Okay. So thank you for sticking with me tonight. If you did, uh, I, uh, I, I wasn't on my game tonight. Uh, I'll, I'll admit, I just wasn't on my game. So uh, thank you for watching. And until next week or the next Impromptitude Live I do, thank you for watching and uh, goodbye.